Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. The Info Channel. What? Oh. Yeah, we're, we do information, sure. Yeah! Uh, he's very informative. And I am very affirmative. So, this is from Chris Limon. Limon? No, Lemon. Chris Lemon, you made him as a bastard! I was just remembering the U2 song, Lemon. Okay. Lemon. I've decided something. Okay, wait, this is a single malt. Shh, shh. This is a single malt. Shh. We'll pour it. The story of this whiskey. Pour it while I shoot. Distillery, Restless Spirits, right. is really cool. I think you're going to like the story. Okay. I don't know if you're going to like the whiskey. I have been burned many times in the past. <laughs> but pour occasionally, you, you, you pull something good out of your ass. So, good story. Three, two, one, go. So, back in the 1800s and the 50s, you had the potato famine. And Ireland is coming apart at the seams, millions are dying, mm -hmm. and a lot of people flee for America at that point. A lot of Irish immigrants end up in Kansas City, which at the time referred to as Gully Town. And they live in the cracks, crags, and hills and around the river, right? But it was a bunch of poor people. Two of those Irish immigrants show up and spend the next hundred plus years uh, having their whole family crawl out of the rocks and become important people. Uh, inventors of the rocket on the Apollo spaceships and oxygen tanks and all kinds of shit. Their family, two in that line, founded Restless Spirits. And the first, one of the first things they did was source an Irish whiskey from Teeling. In Ireland, you remember Teeling, our favorite Irish whiskey. You're killing me here. It's, it's like I'm killing it's like you. To a blank I'm wall. killing you. <laughs> it's a, the thing is when you're trying to tell interesting things to a four-year-old, it's hard to keep them interested without flashcards and blocks and uh, and iPods. <laughs> Give me an iPod. <laughs> Give me an iPod. There needs That's to be my an, point. an official not iPod or iPad is what I meant to say. Yes, me something that I can fiddle with. While you tell your story. So this is not the thing they sourced, but they had a 15-year-old whiskey from Teeling they sourced exclusively. Um, and uh, I desperately want to try that. Is the thing in this bottle something I should be excited about? This is a single malt that they created uh, six months old. Mm -hmm. Super young, yeah. right? That's about how old that true blue, that blue corn or baby blue So was. this is very young. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it started in six months in New Chardoak, then finished in 18 months in used bourbon casks. Okay. So this is a new oak, then bourbon cask finished single malt. So it can't be called a bourbon because it was only aged. We wouldn't want to because it's probably all barley. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and not, I mean, I don't actually know the answer to that question. I don't know if it's all barley because I couldn't find their mash bill anywhere online. But the New Chard oak they used... Uh, only for half a year, and then they moved it for the next year and a half into a bourbon barrel. Right. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. This is... I'm kind of excited about I'm getting that. some sugary sweetness, not overly sugary. And then the barrel note's pretty prominent for me. This, by the way, is bottle number 876 from Batch 1. Dude, this is the first release of their single malt from Kansas City. Okay. This is... Uh, this is what's happening. This is Mike... No. And Benet Shannon. Right now, this is what's happening. I have been too patient for too long. It started with Rex Week, and I extended an olive branch. And I wanted you to find your footing. <laughs> Daniel, I have dominated... Oh, that's good. ...dominated you and this channel and this room for so long. I'm going to give you room to expand your horizons. What has happened is you are giving me batch numbers and long-winded <laughs> stories, and it's just a spreadsheet cluster. I don't even care a little. So I am once uh, again stepping up, and I'm gonna bring the damage. <laughs> What's the, what, do you in, what do you mean by bring the damage? Now here's the thing, here's the thing. I feel like you planned this before we even started. Today. I really had this. Like you were just waiting for this. Not even a little. Yeah. Not even a little. This is premeditated. It's just you. Bored my left, it shriveled into a damn raisin because that was so boring. But we have already proven how 
far oh. I can go as a master level mooch extraordinaire by busting balls. Mm. I don't need to bust your balls some more. I've done that. I think it's too late for that. No, no, no. I think that's what um, like 70% of this episode is so far. This is <laughs> a brave new era. Oh, okay. This is no longer the dark mooch. This it's is the benevolent mooch. This is positive Rex. <laughs> so positive I'm gonna stir the pot because it's <laughs> boring. Positive Rex. With positive upbeat affirmations. Now I feel like we're in an SNL sketch. It's positive Rex. Right there, buddy. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? I appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you. This is hard doing like channels and stuff, <laughs> drinking whiskeys. It's uh, real hard. Real hard stuff. And you know what? You have things to say, which is good. Positive Rex is creeping me out. <laughs> hey, buddy. How's it going? Good. Like that shirt. Tell me good. about the whiskey the only way you know how with your sommelier skills. You look real pretty. This doesn't need to be reciprocated. Oh. That just Thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> if both of us go positive, oh, okay. it's going to get real weird real All quick. Right. Well, someone had to do something because you know nothing. And that shirt makes you look fat. It's the shirt. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's optical illusion. Okay, so tell me about wait, this wait, whiskey. No, taste the whiskey. I have tasted it. you're going to like this. I tasted the whiskey like five minutes ago, man. But you didn't even say anything about it. I tried to, and you kept talking about damn batch numbers and whatever the f***. <laughs> Seriously. No, it's, a, it's not overly sugary sweetness is what I said. It's definitely malt. I mean, there's definitely barley in there. You can tell. It's also not overly woody, tannic yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm actually right? getting the slightest... Where's your glass, Charlie? I'm actually getting this, and it's not as pronounced, as obvious as the Westland, as the Deer Hammer, but that little bit of um, of an almond note on the back end. Yeah, I'm getting that kind of dark molasses note too. Okay. Yeah. Right? But again, another young whiskey. Like this could have been a not that sweet rum. Another young whiskey that is bursting yeah. with uh, with some pretty good flavor. Dude, this is exciting. If this is a shit they're just now coming out with, then you guys need to follow Restless Spirits. Hey. Hey. Good choice on that bottle, bro. Yeah! I know, thanks. Lemon. Zach M Moin? Zach Moyne, I swear to God I went to pour a dram and when I came back to this video and it auto-played and thought we were having a funeral for Rex. <laughs> episode 51. Yeah. <laughs> Was this... Do you remember the episode where you weren't out of town right. with family and I had a picture of you? And I did the whole episode with a picture of you right here? In memory of Rex. Yeah, he said he finished an episode and then he went to the bathroom and came back and it auto-played to that episode <laughs> and it's me with a picture of you. He's like, God. <laughs> <laughs> Rex is dead! <laughs> There's a little wreath over here. <laughs> you know, it doesn't say whether or not he was pleased or no, it really doesn't. devastated. It really doesn't. That's up, uh, open for interpretation. I'm going to assume he was devastated because I'm positive. POSITIVE! <laughs> right. uh, a nudge M, a new gym. I had a question on the Yamazaki review, but it seems better to get answers on a relatively newer video. So here it goes again. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, newer videos get more attention. <clears throat> um, uh, I have a quick question. I'm a relatively new whiskey drinker. Absolutely love the channel. Great job. I enjoy Yamazaki 12 a lot, but it has been really hard finding it these days. It gets sold out before uh, he can get to it in most stores. Yep. Do you have any recommendations for similar whiskey, similar to Yamazaki 12? So I have tried to figure that out for a while. Okay. And uh, I don't think I've been able to replicate it. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing about Yamazaki 12. I believe in you, man. Yeah. You got this. Here's the thing about Yamazaki 12. You're it, very impressed. It's light and subtle, right? Which in Scotch would normally take you towards either like the island, but not Isla. Yeah. Right? Like the, or the coast of like Oban. Yes. Or something like that, right? Yes. But it also has a little bit of the sparkle, but it's not overly sweet. And often in Scotland, when you get to the lighter stuff, you also get into the sweeter stuff at right. the same time. I would agree with the premise that it is really hard to find something if I didn't know you and your experience and your skill set and your gumption. At blending And your gumption. So, I am willing to stand in this vault until you go through every damn whiskey. <laughs> In out the of room. the kindness of your heart. You got this. Well, I pour them all for you, it's, one by one. I, well, I'm just going to make sure. I got your back. <laughs> this is me helping. So actually, that was going to be my answer. My answer was, no, I haven't yet been able to find anything that comes close to the character. Settle in for a three-hour episode. Yamazaki. But if you were willing to blend something, you might be able to recreate Yamazaki 12. Okay, let's try Yamazaki 12. We should have really done this at the beginning. Because this is going to take Well, a you went on a whole rant about how I'm boring and now you're positive, Holy, Rex. No, I'm positive. And now we're 10 minutes in. 
Sorry, we can we can blend in three minutes. That's fine. All right. So this is the Yamazaki 12. This is the Yamazaki 12. Damn. I know. I know. It's um, it's Honey Crisp ap apples, Honey Crisp apples, and uh, I had a thought when you said Honey Crisp apples. Yeah. What has not occurred to me yet? It's a good smart Was thought. starting. That was slick. <laughs> so fast. What hadn't occurred to me yet was starting with Irish whiskey as a base instead of Scotch as a base. It's not too busy. Because I think of Yamazaki and I think Scotch. But the reality is it's more light closer to an Irish whiskey. I wouldn't but say hot still because it needs character. I wouldn't say Irish with a big um, buttery cookie note. No, I would say maybe even Red Breast 12. No, we might be able that to start is with so red savory with a butter note. Okay, so if you start with more of a grain base Irish whiskey. The green spot. Now, Green Spot's got way too much of the coconut. Uh, I'll never be able to overcome that. I believe you're right, but so I can learn and bask in your knowledge. Here's what I think. I need a comparison. I think a grain-based Irish whiskey with a dash of a sherry-finished, lightly peated scotch. Yes, those things. Hold on to this. I will hold on Don't to Don't sip it, because will, you're going to need that as an AB I am not sipping this. I'm saving it. And I'm going to try to make it cheaper and easily accessible. Mm-hmm. So let's just start with what everybody has. Uh, let's start with uh, Jameson. Jameson's gonna be too metallic on the back end. Not if we added sherry sweetness to counteract that metallic note. You know what, some of this evaporated. We probably need to pour it. didn't evaporate, but we do actually need more for a comparison. A little bit more. Okay. So this is the Jameson? Yeah. This is not going to be easy. I'm actually kind of thinking of McAllen because McAllen is so light and the sherry is not overly dominant. Okay, we're headed the right direction. Yes, absolutely head the right direction. Um, instead of sherry, what if I add in Oban 14? That sounds like a good thought. No, it sounds like you want to try some more whiskey. Like. <laughs> um, because there's a little more smoke in that Yamazaki than I remember. After trying the Jameson. Honestly, I don't know how you're going to get rid of the, the butter note from Irish. Yeah. Because that's going to be throughout anything you pour. I'm just going to do a dash of this, and then I'm going to add a dash of the sherry to get the sweetness back. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay, that's enough of the bite. Now we need the sherry. I'm going to do Avalor 12. Yeah, that's it. That's a lot of Avalor. It lost the spike it needed. It's, it's right there if I can get that spike back. Mm -hmm. uh, I might try Talisker. Because the spike is not smoky, it's salty. So we're giving him $200 worth of whiskeys to collect to replicate. Yeah, but he could make <laughs> he could make four bottles worth of Yamazaki 12, which currently is running like over oh, close to $200 if you, can find, if you find the right which one. Which one did you pour in? This one? This okay. one. We're close. Ah, no, it's too charred. It needed black pepper and it brought in smoke. Yep, there's a smoke. I so, I don't. New glass. So we ruined it. We'll start from the beginning. Nah, I didn't need more practice with this one. So, I, uh, what I need is it was perfect up until Talisker, which means we needed more of a black pepper and less of a you know you know smoky note. You know what I think? Hmm. You got this. No, I can't do it, man. We're 14 minutes you know, in already. So here's, here's, I'll try it again, and if I find the answer, have we established, I'll add it to the channel. Have we established uh, a fundamental truth that you're only able to rise to the occasion if I'm giving you It's very possible. And if I'm like... I don't like positive affirmation. I'm just like giving you a little neck rub and a pat on the back. Then... It makes me so uncomfortable I lose <laughs> all my mojo. All right, well, guess what? I can't do it. I quit. I'm out on positive Rex. No, don't hug me! Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.